All right, welcome to week four of the Intel One API Tools training series brought to you by the Stanford High Performance Computing Center as part of our fall seminar series. This week, again, we have a quick introduction uh, and then we'll move into Intel Offload Advisor. Um, today we have Corey and Jennifer from Intel that will be um, sharing information related to that. Uh, 11.35, some Q&A, and then we wrap up promptly at 11.45. So the upcoming session that we have is next week, October 6th, and that is deploying one API in one container on open HPC. And that will be presented by yours truly here, um, myself. Uh, so I hope to see people next week for that one. If you have an interest in OpenHPC and how to get these tools on your um, systems. There's the Intel on uh, event series, October 27th, 28th. Uh, registration's open for that. Um, this may or may not be the correct link for that. Um, I think uh, maybe somebody will share if there's an updated link. Are you waiting on that from Intel, Steve? updated um link. oh that, that's just the link that i grabbed uh okay. it, it, it could be a correct okay. link it could be okay. not okay. But that link you know takes you there um you can always google for it too um so uh there's cs74 this is a course i offer this fall starts october 4th which i believe is next monday evening this is through the continuing studies program so this is for the non-matriculated students um if you have an interest in OpenHPC and learning more about that, along with, again, one API, one container, other types of things, um, and just how to manage your infrastructure, providing services for uh, data, for AI, for HPC, um, this is a great course to take. And videos from the seminar. Uh, are available at tinyurl.com slash Stanford one API. And if there are any questions, you can send those to Jeff Rogers, who is on the call, um, or myself, and we will do our best to get back to you. Let's see. Can you please share links to the videos? Did that and registration for upcoming courses links. Um, the link for registration for upcoming sessions is the same one for the entire series. Um, you just register and select the session that you want to attend and register for each one individually. So with that, I will stop my share and... And Corey or Jennifer, you want to take the screen? Yes, I will share. Great. Let me do a quick introduction for um, Corey and Jennifer. Thank you, everybody, for attending today. Um, this is Jeff Rogers. And please, if you didn't get that email address, let me know. Um, last week, we did have a few requests for um, licenses. We can get you free downloads for, um, the, for um, student licenses for what we're talking about today for all the One API tools. So just email me, and um, I'll try to get them out to you within 24 hours. And with that, uh, today, we're going to have um, Corey Levels is going to be presenting uh, the in Intel Offload Advisor, which is one of the new tools that's been off that's offered in Intel One API. Um, and Jennifer DeMeo will be assisting her with that as well, too. Uh, both of them are senior um, technical consulting engineers with Intel that specialize in uh, analysis tools. With that, uh, Corey, Jennifer, the stage is all yours. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. So uh, welcome, everybody. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, again, my name is Corey Levels, and like Jeff mentioned, I am a technical consulting uh, engineer here at Intel, and today I will be talking to you all about Intel Advisor, uh, specifically the um, Intel Offload Advisor feature, and I'm also joined by my colleague Jennifer DiMatteo. Um, she will be here assisting me with the Q&A portion here at the end. Um, I know we want this to be Q&A discussion. We want to definitely have some time for that, and we are definitely prepared for that, so... Great. One question we've got right out of the box here is, um, are there any plans to support the programming language Julia in Intel Offload Advisor? 
Um, you know, Julia, I don't know. I've had a cust I've had a couple of customer requests kind of pertaining to this. Um, I would have to check with development and follow up. Jennifer, do you have anything that you might you suspect or anticipate coming up with that? I haven't heard any plans about Julia specifically. So that is something that I that we'll need to follow up with the developers and see, you know, a lot of times we um, we take a request to the developers and then depending on um, how much overall interest there is, we can, uh, you know, get better support for certain um, features and languages. So uh, if, since Julia does seem to be, um, um, you know, requested um, more than just, you know, once or a couple times, we'll, um, that they'll put that under consideration. So I'll take that back to the developers. Thank you. Yep, yep, definitely. All right, jumping straight in here, quick agenda. Um, again, primary focus is going to be um, Intel Offload Advisor, so offload modeling. But I think it's going to be really helpful to just kind of throw in a quick um, a quick overview of Intel Advisor as an analysis tool, just kind of as a whole, um, and as well, you know, touch on a little bit of GPU roofline. Um, I think GPU roofline is a really logical progression after you've analyzed your offload advisor results. Um, so I think it's worth talking about in this presentation. So again, start with a quick overview of Intel Advisor analysis tool, um, jump into offload modeling with Intel Advisor, get into GPU roofline. Um, and then open it up for questions and uh, some discussion possibly. A rich set of capabilities for high performance uh, code design. So again, quick quick brief overview here. I'm not sure everybody's level with experience with Intel Advisor, um, but Intel Advisor is a performance analysis tool that is it's really capable of doing a lot of different things for your application. So what you're seeing on this slide is just kind of a high level um, outline. You can see we've got some blue kind of headers here. And what those are, those are key features um, that are gonna fall kind of underneath that Intel Advisor um, umbrella. Again, we've only got 30 minutes, so we're just gonna focus on those first two offload advisor and roofline analysis. Um, but I am going to just say a quick word on, on a lot of these key features here. So um, offload advisor. So that is going to be a, a part of, of Intel advisor that's going to allow you to uh, identify the portions of, of a code that, that would be profitable to offload to a GPU. Uh, can even predict the code's performance if you were to run you know, on a GPU, you know, strictly on a GPU. Um, and it's also going to allow you to experiment with different accelerator configuration uh, parameters. Uh, roofline analysis, I think this is a pretty, pretty complex topic, I think. But um, for today, I think ultimately the roofline analysis is going to offer you uh, a very efficient way to characterize you know, your, your kernels um, and, and visualize just how far you are from, from ideal performance on, on your, specific, um, your specific system. And again, we don't, we don't, we're not gonna have time to get into these last few kind of key features of Intel Advisor, but um, thread pro or vectorization optimization, that's gonna tell you, you know, which places of your code are vectorized or not. Um, how efficiently they are vectorized, and for you know the, the regions that were not, um, it's going to tell you exactly why the compiler was unable to vectorize uh, that that particular region of code. Uh, thread prototyping that's going to be the part of Intel Advisor um, that's going to be able to analyze which pieces of your application, you know, which pieces of your code should be threaded, um, and then can even predict the performance if you were. To, to implement that suggested threading. And lastly, here we have building, you know, the heterogeneous algorithms, and that's specifically referring to our, um, our flow graph analyzer, our FGA. And that uh, brief overview is just gonna allow you to, to visualize your data flow graphs um, and can create those dependency graphs for you. So again, just a quick outline, I think of a lot of the key features falling underneath that, that Intel Advisor umbrella. And with that, we'll jump into the main topic. So that's going to be um, offload modeling with Intel Advisor. So Intel um, Offload Advisor. So just a little bit more breakdown of that. So Offload Advisor. So ideally, this is a tool for 
um, for, for after you've optimized for CPU. Um, and after you've optimized for your CPU, now you say, you know, okay, I've optimized for CPU. Now I wanna get, you know, those projected performance results on a specific, uh, specific GPU, a specific target device, because the idea with Offload Advisor is that uh, you're able to measure your application's kind of uh, uh, projected performance and compare it with its model performance. Um, sorry, excuse me. You're, 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 you're able to, to measure your application's performance and compare it with its model performance on a selected target GPU. So you're, so you're essentially comparing current performance with your projected, you know, offloading on a specific GPU, your target device, um, so that you can then decide, you know, what part of your application you can execute, you want to execute on that target device. So what I've got planned um, is just jumping into some results um, and then just kind of break down what we're looking at kind of section by section, if that works for everybody. All right, so here I've got a screenshot of just some um, initial results. So what this is, um, these are some projected results um, for a very simple, basic matrix multiply, uh, matrix multiply sample. Um, and as you can see, there's quite quite a bit, bit of information that kind of page that gets flashed to you kind of when you when you open up these results. But we're going to just break it down here section by section. But I think uh, an important Kind of point to make here what we really want to reinforce is here is that um, offload advisor is its, its primary goal is to help you kind of identify which kernels to offload um, predict kernel performance on current or future gpus and help you identify you know any bottlenecks or potential issues you know with things surrounding you know things like like data transfer to a gpu things like that um, another thing uh, to kind of highlight here is that when you run Offload Advisor um, via command line, it's going to create an interactive self-contained HTML page in the Advisor GUI. And I think it's really, really nice because everything is very neatly integrated, including, you know, your code snippets um, of your identified kernels. Um, and also, if you notice, if I turn my red laser pointer on, I didn't put an arrow to it, but if you notice this um, snapshot right here, this uh, camera icon, this is really, really subtle, but I think very useful feature. I use it a lot. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to pull together. Um, this, can, this can be done via command line, and you can also be done in this GUI, but um, it's going to pull together you know, your, your um, binaries and your source files so that when you you know, when you copy it from a remote server, um, because a lot of times people are running, you know, offload advisor command line, and then they're copying over the, those results to their local system and viewing it in the GUI or this HTML that I'm referring to. Um, so that's really nice because you can package all that up, um, copy it from a remote server, and you can still view the source code and it's still going to be kind of that, that more interactive HTML. Um, I find it very, very useful, very subtle, but very useful feature. Now, if we come down to the um, the offload bounded by section, so again, I think this is a really, really useful uh, part of offload advisor um, because I think you know, just taking a step back, understanding what is holding you know your application back, I think, is the first step in really putting together you know an optimization game plan here. So, so in this section, it's really breaking down you know uh, those specific factors that are preventing your code. Um, from achieving a better performance if it were executed, you know, on that target device, on that specified target device. Um, so we can see here, this simple matrix multiply, you know, application is LLC BW bound, last level cache bandwidth bound, um, 100%. So again, we can kind of create an optimization game plan around that, that what it's telling us, right? Good and again, question. if- Oops, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Mean, I, I tried. I tried to anticipate what's the sentence. And <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, quick question is: How does Alf Offload Advisor figure out which group of code would be included in one kernel? Hmm. Um, I know that there are a lot of internal metrics, um, and you know what? I think something that might help with that is if you there are these question marks, and if you hover over the question mark, it's going to tell you how a lot of these metrics are being calculated. Um, but I know a lot of it has to do with the internal metrics. Jennifer, do you have any input on that? Um, yeah, so if 
I'm uh, sorry, I was trying to answer the uh, the other question related to the sickle.hpp uh, file, but um, so which group of code would be included in um, one kernel? Um, that it looks at the, the loop and function level. Um, actually, I don't offhand, I'm not entirely sure how it, um, decides what is going to be one particular uh, uh, kernel versus, um, you know, loop versus at the function level. That's uh, something that I'll need to follow up on. Thank you, um, yeah. And Steve, can we just send you responses to these questions and they can get answered that way? Or is there some way of uh, the cleanest way to follow up with this? Yeah, I think we could do that. Okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, we don't have the um, uh, more detailed answer, but but let's keep moving along. We've got limited time, so. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So moving on. So so just down here, we've got our, our offload of bounded by section, and then we've got you know our top offloaded. So this is going to be what offload advisor is kind of pointing out to you, saying you know these are your top candidates for offloading to that to that target device. Um, and then on the counterpart of that, we've got our top non offloaded. This is saying you know these are these would not these are loops functions that would not be profitable to offload to the specified um, offloading offloaded device. So moving on. Okay, getting into kind of the um, overall um, results that Offload Advisor gives you, this is kind of like, this will be at the top of your results, just kind of giving you a, a quick overall kind of outline of how, how the application um, did with, through, through Offload Advisor with, with, the, um, with the offloading that you've specified via command line or in the GUI. Um, so here you can see your program metrics. So, you know, number of offloads that were identified, speed up, uh, things like your time spent on the target device. So we can see here, again, strictly just a simple matrix multiply um, application, but we can see that those, those loops um, are 3.3x faster on the specified GPU versus you know, before when it was running on, on the CPU. Um, the application as a whole, is gonna be 3.3x faster and the fraction of accelerated code, um, it's again, it's gonna be at 100%. So the loop is gonna take 100% of the whole application execution time. And again, like I mentioned um, before, a lot of these, you know, if you're, if you're curious how the, a lot of these things are, you know, a little bit more detail or um, maybe how they're being calculated, uh, these question marks I think are really, really descriptive. Um, I think just, just hovering over them, they'll give you a pretty good breakdown, I think, of, of what is being kind of reported in that metric. Um, and then if I come down to this bar chart here, uh, again, a pretty interesting feature, I think, as well. So what this bar chart is doing, um, it is visually comparing the uh, original execution time spent on your base platform. So for example, your CPU um, with the estimated execution time on the, on the target device. So, um, and the chart down here is gonna break down um, the estimated time by specific tasks. So we can see here the original application took 23.3 seconds um, with that with the accelerated um, version that's gonna be seven seconds on the target device. And then we can see here, it's gonna also break down you know, our target platform. We got these projected results for a uh, Gen 9 GT2. And again, just kind of re reiterating those, those above um, metrics there. So number of offloads, your speed up the accelerated code, your ad, um, your MDAL's law speed up, fraction of accelerated code, things like that. Um, again, very useful, I think, just kind of a quick, quick view to say, you know, okay, these are my results without getting into too much detail. So your in-depth analysis of your top offloaded regions. Um, okay, so what we just went over was the summary page. Again, that's kind of what's what, what will be defaulted to when you open your results. But if you jump over to your accelerated regions page, um, this is where we're gonna get a more comprehensive breakdown of just kind of uh, from the summary page, we had that, you know, that top offloading section. Um, you know, it, it was pretty, pretty high level, I think. So what this is, this is a little bit more detail on, on those top offloading candidates for, for your results. Um, so you're, uh, one thing to mention is if you, you know, you're going to be able to see things like your basic estimated metrics, you know, you're bounded by your data transfer and things like that. Um, 
you know, it, because, you know, as you're, as you're porting your application to a discrete GPU, I think it's really important to consider uh, just how much of your data will be transferred from your CPU to your GPU, you know, and also back to your CPU. So, because that, that, that data transfer cost is often going to dictate, you know, whether your GPU offload is going to be worthwhile, you know, for, for your application. Um, so offload advider, advisor is going to give you the data transferred and it's going to use that in addition to, you know, those, those other internal metric, metrics that I mentioned. Um, it's going to use that in determining whether, you know, you should offload based on, you know, your GPU's characteristics that you've, that you've specified. Um, Another kind of quick side note I think is nice uh, if you highlight you know, any of these loops or functions, I've, I kind of cut off the screenshot here, but um, if you highlight this, this function, any of your top candidates, or, or you will be able to see the corresponding source code. It'll be over here on the right-hand side um, and it's gonna show you the corresponding source code and you'll be able to see exactly where it's being recommended to use your DPC++ or you know, your OpenMP offload. Um, so, so again, I think that's, that's really nice. So in this specific instance, we can see, you know, it's recommending that the loop at multiply.c is recommended for offloading. We already saw on the summary page that it's less level cache bandwidth bound, um, estimated to run a GPU about seven seconds, and it's transferring about uh, 101 megabytes of data. Um, and again, I think this, this breakdown of data, I think is very valuable, just being able to see, you know, your, th your throughput, your latency, your data transfer um, alone are, I think are very, very helpful. So your in-depth analysis of the top offloaded regions, again, this is one of those kind of, um, I, th I think it's pretty subtle, not super flashy, but I think it's pretty useful to be able to see where, you know, your top candidates for offload are falling in your source and call tree. Um, again, you'll still get that breakdown of your, you know, your latencies, your throughput, your taxes of reuse, your data transfer, you know, the overall speed up, the time. Um, you're still gonna get the same, same kind of uh, uh, breakdown um, of, perf of metrics and things like that in the top-down section, but you'll just be able to see where it's falling in your source and call tree. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention, I use a lot, it's very helpful, is the recommendations tab. So I think Intel Advisor as a whole is really, really good um, with this and, and Offload Advisor as well, but it's very good at, it's not just gonna give you your results. I think it's really good at kind of providing that next level of, of you know, next steps and recommendations. So for this, you're gonna get the guidance you know, for offloading your code to that target device and optimizing it so that, you know, your, your code is going to benefit the most in, in with these recommendations. So, you know, if, if these top candidates for offloading, you know, have room for optimization or are currently, you know, underutilizing the capacity of that target device, um, Intel Advisor is going to, you know, give you these hints here. And in some cases, it gives you actually sample code. Um, that might be, you know, helpful in, in those next steps um, and furthering your codes, you know, perform, improving performance. So I think that kind of wraps up the kind of the main ideas um, behind Offload Advisor. I know it's, I, I think it's a pretty straightforward and relatively easy tool to use. I think it's pretty uh, depending, I mean, obviously that's going to depend on the complexity of your, of your application and things like that, but um, again, I think it's a pretty well documented, well, um, just straightforward overall tool to use. Maybe something that might be worth mentioning is that Offload Advisor is really, really great for comparing those projected results, right? So, you know, there could be cases where you have an application that's, you know, running on your CPU, you've optimized it for CPU, now you want to get those projected results. And and you see that, you know, it, it might not actually be profitable to offload to a Gen 9, but maybe it's prof there are cases where it's actually profitable to offer to a Gen 11. So I think being able to see those projected results and see those comparisons and performance and things like that um, is very, very valuable. Um, but again, I think that, that kind of wraps up a lot of the, the big ideas behind Offload Advisor. It's kind of intent. Um, and I think, Jeff, how are we doing on time? Do I have time to get into this GP roofline or? Yeah, no, by all means, please get into it. And um, okay. and I'm gonna let Jennifer, she's answering questions by typing in the res the the question, the, the responses to the question. So I'm gonna let her do that rather than interrupt you. Um, sure. Jennifer, okay. you, you good with that, Jennifer? 
Yeah, and I can also address these during the Q&A um, uh, section, uh, okay. session as well. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep, let's keep going. Awesome. All right. So GPU roofline with Intel advisors. So like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I think this is completely reasonable to throw this in here with Intel offload advisor because I think using the GPU roofline uh, analysis is a very logical progression after analyzing your offload advisor results because uh, because offload advisor is saying, hey, you know, this is what we think is going to be profitable to offload to your GPU, to a target device. So after you analyze those results, and then you go and say, okay, I'm going to implement that, that offloading, I'm going to do it. So I, you implement that, and then you can come over. So now you've got your application with those implementations. And now you come over to, to some of the other Intel advisor tools like GPU roofline analysis, and that's where you're going to be able to see, you know, how the performance is measuring against what your system is truly capable of. So what is a roofline chart? I think it's a pretty broad, um, I think it's a pretty complex topic. I think it can, I don't know about complex, but it's, it's new. It can be a little much to wrap your head around depending on the complexity of your application and what's being plotted and the memory levels you wanna look at, the limitations of your system and things like that. Um, I think it's one of those things that conceptually it's pretty easy, but you know, I think it, it has a lot of potential um, to benefit you if, you if you really know what you're looking for, I think. So a roofline chart is a method of visually overlaying your actual application performance onto representations of your hardware limitations for your specific system. So essentially, the roofline chart can be used to identify uh, not only where bottlenecks exist, but what likely is causing them, uh, and which you know plotted loops and functions are going to provide the most speed up if they are optimized. So plotting a roofline chart. So here we have kind of another conceptual outline of a roofline chart. So what this is doing is, like I mentioned, this is charting the application's achieved performance and the arithmetic intensity against the system's maximum achievable performance. So your x-axis is going to be the arithmetic intensity versus the y-axis, which in this case is the flops. Um, so the idea here is that the diagonal lines are going to represent your memory bandwidth limitations that are preventing your loops and functions from achieving better performance versus, excuse me, versus your horizontal lines that are indicating the compute capacity limitations. So the kind of the main idea here behind a roofline chart is that a plotted loop or function cannot exceed the topmost roofline as that's going to represent uh, the, the maximum capabilities of that specific system. So ideally, the greater the distance between a plotted loop or function and the highest achievable roofline, the more opportunity there is for improving performance. So basically, you can see we've got our diagonal memory bandwidth limitations here. So any loop or function that's plotting underneath that diagonal line you can conclude that that is memory bound, right? Versus anything plotting under the horizontal lines, um, under those compute capacity limitations, you're gonna be compute bound. So we can see here, this plotted looper function um, has less room for optimization versus down here, this plotted looper function. Whereas we could, there are numerous different, you know, uh, implementations we could, optimizations we could implement to, to get this to the peak. Uh, compute capacity limitation for the system. Okay, so identifying good optimization candidates. So here we've got kind of another conceptual outline of a roofline chart, but what we really want to note is um, something I didn't mention on the last slide is that uh, when your loops and functions are plotted, the size of those loops and functions are going to directly correspond with their levels of impact. So the, the large red plotted loops and functions are going to be where, um, where advisor is saying, you know, hey, this is where you wanna spend your time. Uh, this is where you're gonna get the most return for your optimization efforts. Uh, the yellow plotted loops and functions, um, those uh, might be useful to optimize. Um, it could be situational. 
Um, and the green dots are considered to have very low, very little impact um, on your overall performance of your application. So um, again, that, I think that's really useful, just kind of visually overlaying, you know, where, where you're at um, with your plotted loops and functions. I think that's, that's something definitely we want to point out. Um, and also we mentioned that the roofline chart is very useful in identifying those primary bottlenecks, right? So I think that is illustrated in the slides because with, with the way the roofline chart works, your primary bottleneck would be your closest roofline, right? So if we take you know, this plotted loop G, we can conclude, okay, this is memory bound because it's uh, un plotting underneath that diagonal memory bandwidth limitation. But we can see here, we've got a, our primary bottleneck is gonna be that, that, uh, that L3, right? So that is where we can start to come up with a game plan to get us to the next uh, limitation. Okay, so the last, last slide I have here um, on GPU roofline, um, I just wanted to throw in, just to keep it a little bit consistent, I threw in a uh, roofline for that matrix multiply application that we saw in the offload modeling, um, because just kind of tying a lot of this together, I think since, so since advisor has the capability to plot a roofline chart, um, like displayed here on the right-hand side, you're gonna be able to visualize you know, your, your application's performance levels relatively to the system's peak compute, compute uh, performance and memory bandwidth. So kind of in a nutshell here, your roofline analysis is gonna help you optimize effectively by helping you find those high impact but under-optimized loops, um, answering questions. You know, one of the main aspects of, of uh, a roofline chart is to help you conclude whether you're memory bound or compute bound. And you can kind of come up with optimization strategies from there. So it's answering questions like, do I need cache um, or vectorization optimization? So in this specific case, we can see that this matrix multiply is, because this is plotting um, under the right-hand side, we can see that we are compute bound and um, you can we see that we're scalar ad peak. Uh, and so, so what we wanna do here is we would add a uh, vectorization to push it to the next roof, right? Because we can see here our ad peak is right here, our roof line. So if we want to implement some vectorization that might be able to move us up in performance, move us up closer to that peak that maximum achievable performance for this application. Yeah, that's all I had for you guys. Uh, I tried to keep it kind of brief, uh, uh, high level-ish. So yeah, I think it's time to, we can open up to some questions. Jennifer, unless you have any other comments, um, I can go back to slides if we wanna elaborate on anything else or. I'm sure. So yeah, I've just been um, answering some of the questions in the, um, in the not... you know question answer tool. They uh, they tend to go away as soon as I type in an answer. So they're um, um, it's I think a little tougher to I have been able to see continue the, the discussion. But um, yeah, there were some questions about um, you know besides the 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 question about how it how it determines a set of code you know what loops I guess uh, are considered a um, a kernel to be offloaded to the GPU and I I just I just typed an answer that uh, it likely looks through all of the loops as it's doing that that initial uh, survey analysis and. Um, you know, I, I don't know for sure how it works in the back end, but there's likely some um, threshold with the data set and um, an amount of compute that um, it determines that this, you know, this set of nested loops or this loop would be considered a kernel. And then there was a question about um, the, the characteristics of a particular GPU and whether um, some of those can be changed uh, with offload advisor. Um, so yeah, there, there are you know, pre-configured um, um, GPU uh, um, 
configurations built in. And then there's, I, I put a link um, for some more information uh, in that, that chat window uh, about, you know, what, how you can look at those configurations. Uh, there was a question about um, taxes with reuse um, the, in the offload advisor section. And that is, you know, the tax for transferring data from the CPU to GPU. If you can reuse that data on the GPU, then that's going to lower the, you know, make the, that, that overall tax um, less significant. But if you are always, um, you know, retransferring the data over to the GPU to be processed, then that, that tax is, you know, that's, that would be tax without reuse. Um, let me continue. Here's, here's, here's a couple more questions here too. Um, if you don't mind, uh, does the Intel C compiler um, automatically output instructions to prefetch data into the cache or do programmers have to do that manually? It should depend. So um, I'm not a I'm not a a, a compiler um, expert for uh, the new compilers, but it should be you know depending on your uh, the optimization setting um, should have the the ability to do that. Um, do you want to look into that one possibly, Jennifer and. Um... Uh, and see if there's additional question. Let me go ahead and go jump to the next one here. It's I have a prototype system for development and do some optimization that, and then move my computation on H on HPC farm. The question is, does advisors optimization on prototype will be suitable? Let me repeat that. Does advisors optimization on prototype will be suitable, efficient enough on an HPC farms? Uh, so it, um, probably, so the it, part of what advisor does is it looks at performance on, um, you know, the system that you're, that you're running on. So it's, it does, um, uh, it does a, a, some benchmarking to determine, you know, what the limits are and what the capabilities are on, on your system, and then uh, looks, you know, and it depends on some of the the compiles. So, for example, if you are um, if you're prototyping for a we lost you, Jennifer. A system AVX five twelve, and then you. What's that? We lost you for a second. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I have network issues. Um, it, it, basically, a, as long as the system that you're you're moving to has similar characteristics. So, for example, taking advantage of AVX five twelve. Um, that's. It, I think for the most part, whatever you optimize for, uh, you know, locally on your prototype, is going to translate to the your HPC system. Um, I, I guess depending on some what some of the optimizations are, and this is speaking more generally as opposed to just uh, GPU offloading, but um, you know, looking at uh, memory utilization, if you're able to um, improve your memory accesses, then generally that's going to, um, you know, that's going to provide op um, better performance anywhere. Uh, the instruction set might be a little bit different because, um, you know, depending on the architecture, whether it supports things like AVX 512, uh, there may be um, some differences there, but overall, I think that um, that the optimizations should carry over. Okay. Okay. Um, what we'll do too is um, 
for well, make sure and um, if you have any questions on any of the uh, if you I mean not questions if you'd like to get access to the um, to one to a license to one API license um, I'll go ahead and um, I can send a link over to Steve as well as just email me at Jeff Rogers at Intel com and Rogers is spelled with a D um, but if you do that I'm also going to include to a um, our um, a link to our library which is tech decoded which can answer a lot of questions when you're working on things using the tools as well but um anyway we'll get back to you with some of the we'll get back to you with answers on these things we'll, we'll filter or um or um, submit them through steve let's see here so is there any other questions at all okay steve all right um well that's it for today um thanks <sighs> Corey and Jennifer for presenting today. Uh, very informative. Uh, again, next week is installing Contain oh. containers. Yes, yeah. Next week is one, uh, Open HPC and the deployment of one API and one container. Um, so I will see you next week for that. If you have any questions, again, send them to either Jeff or myself, Jeff Rogers at Intel.com or Steve Jones at stanford.edu. Uh, thanks everyone for attending and I'll see you next week. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you. Great. Bye. Bye. Thanks.